Those aren't fans, those are trolls, and it's a real disservice to... Caitlin Clark recently addressed the surge of online negativity and trolling directed at WNBA players, particularly after her team's playoff exit. Yeah, it's, it's definitely upsetting. I don't think there's... Nobody in our league should be facing any sort of racism, hurtful, disrespectful, hateful comments and threats. She emphasized that this behavior is unacceptable, stating, those aren't fans, they're trolls, highlighting the need to focus on basketball instead of giving attention to hateful comments. She's obviously an incredible star. She's totally revitalized interest. Well, I mean vitalized interest in the WNBA in a way it never was before. Clark noted that while many fans are supportive, the increase in viewership has also brought out a troubling number of toxic individuals. The people in our league, the organization, um, the WNBA, um, but there are a, a lot of really good fans, whether they've been fans for 20 plus years or whether they're new fans in our league. Ultimately, she advocates for celebrating the league's talent and fostering a positive environment for all players. But since she's joined the league as a rookie, she's been abused. She's been bu abused over and over again by these other players and reportedly it's a race thing. What I find amusing about the let's focus on basketball sentiment is how everyone praised Stephanie White for her comments, yet overlooks something significant. Yeah, I think that's, uh, there were so many moments. Um, and every place we went was so unique, honestly. It's fun to kind of look back. Like people always ask me like, where was, where was your favorite road arena? And I'm like, they're all so different and unique in their own way. And Collier's incredible performance, scoring 42 points, then 38, and averaging 40 in a playoff series for the first time ever. This achievement has barely been mentioned. I've noticed that I'm discussing Collier more than many longtime WNBA fans who seem more focused on criticizing newcomers like me. Many black women inside the WNBA are resentful that this white woman came in and is getting all this attention. But hey, let's hear what Caitlin Clark has to say on the matter. Those aren't fans, those are trolls, and it's a real disservice to... I appreciate how James Boyd pointed out that Caitlin Clark has addressed these issues before, especially since some people claim she's been quiet. Obviously, for me, my first year here is like getting to travel to all these new arenas, and there was a few I'd already played at in college, but... Um, just doing it as my first time in the WNBA, like those are moments you're going to remember within themselves. And obviously LA was special. The crowd we have there. Do they really expect her to comment every time something happens to a player? That would just add stress for her. It's okay to be a hater in sports. Like hating in sports is a part of the game. Like I like when our fans are so engaged and so passionate that they just don't like the other team. But being racist, sexist, and violent with your words, come on now, what are we doing? Honestly, I think many of these critics don't genuinely want things to improve. Group cannot be a representation of what the WNBA would want in their league. This is our league. This was built, like, I feel like as a women's basketball historian myself, I've been watching since I was five. I was here before the league started. As a lot of the fans on social media feel the same. They just want to target Caitlyn like they do with others. That ain't a representation of us. Y'all not like us. They not like us, okay? So please don't confuse me saying motivated by hate by meaning hating on a team the way a normal diehard fan would. Although the team claims to have good attendance, they play in a small venue that can only accommodate 3,500 fans. Crowds tend to show up mainly when star player Caitlyn Clark is playing. For instance, let me just give you some examples. A diehard Falcons fan can hate the Saints, but they would be going a little bit too far if they created nude AI pictures of Saints players and then sent them to the Saints players' families. That's what Caitlyn Stans have done to Angel Reese. They seem more focused on dragging her down rather than fostering any real change. You know, playing at home in front of, you know, these fans and the way the young girls just, you know, dangle over the side of the rails and are so happy and people are crying and you understand the impact that you're having on people's lives and um, that's what's so cool about it for myself. I anticipate that some people will respond with comments like, she's just trying to deflect from the real issues, claiming that focusing on basketball overlooks bigger problems. Nobody disputes that she's an amazing basketball player but still they seem resentful and angry toward her. I bet a few will say she's only addressing trolls and good fans instead of the core issues. I I really admire this group, whether it was the coaching staff or whether it was my teammates. 
every single day they showed up with a positive attitude. They showed up with the same exact energy. They just wanted to get better. They wanted to help us find a way to win. While this viewpoint might be a minority, it will definitely be a vocal one. And it's resulted in physical alterations on the court that don't get called as fouls, that the girls then deny were intentional. And Caitlin Clark always takes the high road. She never, you know, points the finger, but it happened again. If we look at engagement on social media, there are so many talented players and teams worth celebrating. I think it was a huge learning opportunity for myself. I learned a lot about myself as a basketball player, as a person, um, being resilient when you're, your back's up against the wall. Caitlin essentially echoed what Stephanie White said. If anyone thinks a 22-year-old should do more, I'd ask, what are they doing? She, her team <laughs> was playing the Connecticut Suns, and the player... Mm. Uh, Dejane Carrington tried to get the ball from Caitlin, and at the end, Caitlin plays for the Indiana Fever. At the end, it seems pretty obvious to me, intentionally scratches Caitlin's eye with her long fingernails. She denies it was intentional, but watch, there it is. It's frustrating to see some twist her words. What really frustrates me is how quickly people jump to the conclusion that if they turned on her after the Taylor Swift post, then they weren't real Caitlin Clark fans. We all agreed that those were just trolls using her name. Um, I feel like there's just so many memories you're gonna remember from your rookie year. Like your rookie year is something you're, you're always gonna cherish as you go throughout your career. But now, just a week later, some are claiming that Caitlin's fans are the problem. It's never been her true supporters. It's always been trolls. Because the um, the girl who did the hitting, the Connecticut State player, Dijonet, is a lesbian. Racist, homophobic, and misogynistic vitriol on social media. Okay. Sure, some fans can be toxic, like in any sport, but there's a clear difference between toxic fans and trolls. It's the fact that the reporter is not allowed to ask that question, just in general, even if this was the first time, but after a series of events where we've watched all season long and into the postseason, Caitlin Clark get abused and taken out. I mean, even during timeouts, people are intentionally walking into her, bumping into her, doing things mid-play and after the play. And if you don't know, Christine Brennan's so woke, I don't know how she ever sleeps. So this isn't exactly somebody She's coming so from the Daily Wire or Fox, Fox News. So the fact that they're attacking her just shows you the WNBA continues to drop the ball on this whole issue. They got given the greatest gift of all time. This rivalry between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. And you use the word vitalize because you're right. Caitlin has been consistent in her stance, even defending others on live TV after the incident. And for those saying it was just trash talk, it's important to note that this occurred after the game, not in the heat of the moment. Caitlin Clark consistently shows respect while still standing up for others, like Angel Reese. It's impressive how she defends her peers, demonstrating a level of maturity that many lack. I fundamentally deny and, and I think you're basically lying if you're saying what Caitlin Clark did and Angel Reese did are the same thing. They're not. I like trash talking. If you hit a big shot in the moment or you're talking in the moment back and forth and you do this or whatever, you talk. I don't care. She's gone out of her way to support players like Angel and Kennedy Carter, even when it might not have seemed warranted. That is not what Angel Reese did. Angel Reese, they're up 15 points. We have a side by side. She followed her after the game was over, doing this to her, doing this. Find me one example in any sport of anybody after somebody wins a championship, confetti coming down, not in a close game, and find me a player stalking the best player on the other team. It does not exist, it does not happen. Despite her efforts, she still faces criticism. It's clear that she's trying to uplift the league and those around her. While I can't speak to what happens behind the scenes, I believe there are many genuinely good people in the WNBA, and if I had to pick a person of the year, it would likely be Erica Wheeler. It's going to be tougher for people to twist Caitlin Clark's words now. One thing to consider is that the reporter could have mentioned the threats she's faced. If Caitlin chooses not to share those details, Details and prefers to keep things private, that's her choice. She doesn't owe anyone an explanation, especially not to fans who are unlikely to change their minds. Both Caitlyn and Angel Reese have dealt with the downsides of fame. While Caitlyn may not openly discuss her struggles, she manages them privately, relying on her family and avoiding the spotlight. Ultimately, what matters most for players like Caitlyn and Angel is their mental health. They should prioritize decisions that support their well-being. Caitlyn isn't obligated to speak out about every issue. She'll share her thoughts when asked, as she did recently, but she shouldn't feel pressured to address every incident publicly. No player should feel they need to engage with negativity if they cope better by staying off social media. Did you 
catch the intense showdown between Caitlin Clark and Dewana Bonner. It was more than just a game. It sparked a lot of buzz. Clark, the exciting rookie, faced off against veteran Bonner in a heated exchange, especially following the recent eye-stabbing incident that had everyone talking. The confrontation happened just minutes into their playoff match, and it's definitely got fans buzzing about what went down. Now, here's where things get really intriguing. This wasn't just a single play. It represented a shift in women's basketball. Let's dive into the details. Early in the first quarter of a WNBA playoff game, Caitlin Clark attempted a three-pointer. When no foul was called, tensions began to rise. Wow, can you believe what just happened? Clark and Bonner got into a heated argument, and before we knew it, there was a little scuffle going on. It's wild to see a rookie going head-to-head with a veteran. This marks a pivotal moment in Clark's journey from being a rookie sensation to a potential WNBA legend. You might wonder if this is the point where she solidifies her place in the league. Keep an eye on her, as this confrontation could signal the start of an exciting new chapter for women's basketball. While the tension was palpable, Clark's influence extends far beyond just this one incident. How did this college superstar transform into the most electrifying rookie we've seen in years? Before any game kicks off at Gainbridge Fieldhouse, fans rush to the rail, leading to what might be the most exhilarating minute or so of any Indiana Fever match. Caitlin Clark approaches it with the urgency of a team rallying in the final moments of a game. All realize where the credit needs to be given as far as the success of this WNBA season. Caitlin Clark came in and made such an impact. This raises eyebrows across the league. In my experience in corporate environments, conflicts of interest can easily arise. If I were an owner or coach in this league, I'd be concerned about whether players are focusing on their teams or personal relationships. There are whispers suggesting Smith may have intentionally missed a screen during a game. Now we have to wonder if there's more beneath the surface. 28 years, the numbers were stellar. Caitlin Clark drew a whole new fan base into it. And now the question is, because she has been eliminated, she and the Indiana Fever are eliminated after losing two games to the Connecticut Sun. What is the rest of the season going to look like? Are people still going to care? That is the question on everybody's mind. With all these racially charged tweets and fans calling for Carrington's suspension for Game 2 of the playoffs, Kathy Engelbert remains disturbingly quiet. As commissioner, she should be aware of what's happening and not just assume all this attention is good for the league. This is the highest viewed season in the history of the league. It may seem beneficial now, but if fans tuning in to watch Caitlin Clark decide enough is enough and stop watching, it could backfire dramatically. Because when you look at the numbers with Caitlin Clark there, her first playoff game drawing 1.84 million viewers, ridiculous numbers. The highest rated playoff game since game two of the 2000 WNBA finals. This wasn't even just an opening round game back in 2000. This was one of the finals games. So this clearly is showing how much of an impact Caitlin Clark is having. They don't want to see one of their biggest stars getting hurt. The professionalism of the WNBA is being called into question here. It seems they struggle to manage their players effectively and may hesitate to act out of fear of media backlash if they penalize a prominent black lesbian activist. While media criticism is unavoidable, it's vital to protect a player who significantly significantly boosts viewership and attendance. Otherwise, the league risks becoming irrelevant. There's anti-white rhetoric circulating as people mock an eye gouge after it happened while laughing and joking about it. This doesn't look good at all. What do you think about this situation? With all this new funding coming in and considering how much networks paid for WNBA coverage, eventually these networks will ask both commissioners if they realize that the WNBA only secured a $200 million deal because of one player. Make no mistake, sorry Dijon I. Carrington, Angel Reese, and Aja Wilson, nobody is tuning in for you specifically. It's all about Caitlin Clark. 1.2 million viewers versus 394,000, get over it. The situation surrounding Dijon I. Carrington and Caitlin Clark has sparked a lot of discussion. The level of criticism is unprecedented, especially considering Caitlin has already dealt with her share of scrutiny this season. The last time I recall such intensity was when when Kennedy Carter had her controversial incident during a game. By now, everyone has seen the footage of what was labeled a foul, though many are calling it a non-foul. And I feel the angle used in that footage doesn't truly reflect what happened. The act of poking someone in the eye is serious. 
and DJ and I has made some statements about it that I find hard to believe. This story is currently trending in the WNBA. The game occurred just two days ago, and I have to mention that the viewership numbers were impressive, larger than any WNBA finals since 1999. This highlights how much attention Caitlin Clark is drawing to the league. However, this also explains why some players are feeling frustrated. There seems to be a hint of pettiness involved. Additionally, it raises questions about race in this context. Now, turning to Dijanai Carrington's remarks, she's facing significant backlash, which seems justified. Meanwhile, WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert has been notably absent from this conversation. It appears she's hesitant to speak out, likely due to concerns about backlash from certain activist groups if she supports Caitlin Clark. This is a tricky situation for the league. They need to handle it carefully because fans are starting to reconsider their support amidst all this drama. Let's look at what D. Jonai said. I don't even know why I would want to poke anyone in the eye. That's hard to swallow because she clearly made contact. She added, I didn't realize I hit her. I was just trying to play the ball. Honestly, I find that hard to accept. Everyone has seen the video by now. There was even a moment where Marina Mabry joked about it during the game, which felt dismissive. People aren't going to easily accept her excuse, claiming she didn't know she made contact. Really? It's tough to buy that when you see how relaxed she seemed afterwards.